but um, as we begin, we'll have a seat in your favorite seated position, wherever that might be. If it's like this, crisscross, you could stay like that. If your knees are feeling a little stiff today and one leg needs to be straight, you could do that. You can always invite pillows and bolsters into the space to make it more comfortable for you. So <clears throat> we'll just begin our practice seated this morning. And I'd like to just introduce myself. My name is Leah wilson Fellis. And this will be an all levels yoga video that will focus on the whole body, but we'll spend a little extra time in the upper body today doing some shoulder work, some core and trunk work. But of course the whole body is connected, so everything that we do will kind of be like a full body movement. So I like to begin the class with a mudra, and mudras are hand positions. They're seals or gestures. And so the one that I want to offer today is really simple. You would just take your right hand and place it over your lower belly. And your left hand could either come out to the side or just be up on your lap. And so I've been working through the chakras lately. And the chakras are these energy channels through our body. And this one is the navel chakra, the sacral chakra. So it's right around your belly button. And it's the color orange. And so I like to imagine like just a little circle that is orange, kind of right around my belly button. And so I'm kind of just bringing my awareness there with my right hand. And my left hand is, I'm going to just visualize a flower in my hand. And so if you'd like, you can close your eyes or you can keep them open. It's up to you. I like to look down at the ground and find just like a little spot on the floor, maybe Maybe like um, an eye in the wood floor, if you have a wood floor, or just a spot in the carpet or on your yoga mat. Something to gaze at. And with our right hand on our belly, it brings our awareness to that space. And so as you begin to breathe, bring the air into that lower belly portion. So breathing in, you'll feel that area fill up with air. And as you breathe out, you'll feel that area kind of just soften. So let's just breathe here with our right hand on our lower belly. A couple more breaths. Breathing in and feeling the belly expand. And breathing out. Feeling the belly contract. Just bringing your awareness to the lower belly and to your breath. And now we'll start working with our left hand. So as you breathe in and your belly expands under your right palm, really expand your left hand too so that your fingers are really spread, spreading out wide. And as you exhale, the fingers come back together, kind of like a flower coming back together. So it's like inhale, daytime, the flower opens, and exhale, it closes, like at nighttime. So inhale and let your hand open, and exhale and let your hand close. We'll try that about five more times. Inhaling, our hand opens, the belly expands with breath. And exhaling, the flower closes and the belly relaxes. Beautiful work. Those of you who I can see, it looks good. So we're just kind of bringing our awareness to the breath and slowing down our mind a little bit here. Let's do one more, two more breaths here. Beautiful. 
beautiful work. Let's release our right hand and bring it onto our lap as well, so the other knee. And let's start to just move our arms in a range of motion so that you're just kind of checking out how your arms are moving today. So in inhale and bring your arms out and up overhead. And as you exhale, float your hands back down towards your lap. And we'll just do that with our breath. So there's no rush getting through these movements. As we inhale, we raise the arms up. And as we exhale, we float the hands down. So we're just kind of checking out the range of motion. Are there any clicks when your arms move? Are there any spots where your arms get stuck in the range, where it kind of feels like it gets caught? Let's do it one more time, just checking out the range out in front. And then we'll bring our arms out to the side and do the same thing. So now out to the side, reaching our arms out and up overhead, and exhaling, floating our arms back down towards the floor, grounding through the fingertips. Doing it again, just allowing your arms to float and recognizing if there's any spots in your arm where it gets stuck. There we go. All right, let's do it one more time. And as you exhale, float your hands down. If you need to rearrange your legs, you certainly can. We're going to drop our right hand into the floor and sweep the left hand out and up. Now we're going to start to bend into that right side body so that the left arm is doing the reaching here, feeling that left side body stretching out. So I feel this all the way down into my waist. One more deep breath. Breathe in and breathe out. Just like that opening and closing of the lotus. As you breathe in, let's bring it back up to center and pause right in the middle. And we'll try it on the left side too. So move slow, move at your own pace and feel your body. Feel how it moves and feel if there's any restriction in your movement. Relax your left side, your left shoulder and take one more breath. Beautiful, inhale, bring it back up to center. And let's crisscross our legs the other way, unless you've got your good leg in front, so if you're like, no, this really doesn't feel right for my legs, so then you can just go back to how you were. <laughs> All of us sometimes have a, a good side. We're gonna try that again. So right hand slides out, left hand reaches up and over. So we're trying to make a straight line from our left fingertips down to our left hip. It's kind of cool to see yourself in a mirror or in a camera so that you can make that straight line happen. Take one more breath. And with your next inhale, bring it back up to center. Ground in the center just for a moment, and then we'll sweep out towards the left. Right hand reaches up and over, and again, we're trying to make a straight line from our right fingers down to our right hip. And we'll just take three breaths while we're here, stretching, reaching through those right fingers, grounding through the right sit bones. Beautiful. With an inhale, fan yourself back up to center. We'll meet in the middle. Great work. Let's add a twist here to each side. Left hand to the right knee, right hand to the mat behind you. Take a big inhale and fill yourself up like you're sitting up really tall. And as you exhale, twist a little bit further into your spine. Inhale, sit up tall again. And exhale, twisting into your spine to the right. One more time. Remember, if it hurts, that's not serving your body. So do what feels good. Now we'll start to unwind, swinging our left hand to the mat behind us. Right hand to the left thigh or knee. Inhale to sit up tall. Exhale, add your twist to the left. Inhale again, sitting up tall, shoulders relaxed. Exhale, twisting to the left. 
One more breath here. And we'll start to unwind, swinging our right hand back to support us behind, behind on the mat. So my hands are kind of turned out or behind. And I'm holding myself here with my hands, with my arms locked, shoulders squeeze back. Start to look up and let your throat and your neck open. So you're extending the neck. Beautiful work. Let's bring ourselves back up to center. And we're gonna do a little bit of shoulder work here. So I'd like us to open our arms like wings. And as you inhale, squeeze your shoulder blades back. So you're opening your throat, opening your chest. As you exhale, wrap your arms around you like you're giving yourself a big hug and try to pull your elbows away from your chest. As you inhale, open your chest, squeeze. And as you exhale, try the other elbow on top. So we'll do that a couple times. Make it a really long breath. Slow, long inhales, opening the chest. Slow, long exhales, giving yourself that nice hug, wrapping your arms around. Inhaling to open. Exhaling to round. Try it two more times so that each arm gets a total of three hugs. Beautiful. The next time you open your arms, turn your fingertips down and we'll rearrange our legs. So I don't want my feet to be in your face, so I'm going to turn long ways on my mat and we'll extend our legs out to the side. When you extend your legs out, you want about a block width between your feet. So you don't have to have a block there, but you want your feet to be separated. You don't want your big toes to be touching. You can either slide down your legs or you can take a big inhale reaching up first and then folding over your legs. So we're going into a forward fold, reaching for your knees or your shins or your ankles or maybe you're at your toes. Round your back and look down, pretend like there's like a beach ball that you're rounding over. If you tuck your chin to your chest, you'll feel this in your shoulder blades and down maybe even into your lower back. With your next breath in, breathing in, you'll start to roll back up to center. Nice work, everyone. Let's do our right side first. So we're gonna be incorporating upper body shoulder stretches with lower body stretches. So keep your right leg straight, and if it's in your practice to bend your left knee out to the side, you can. Or if that left leg, it just doesn't like to bend like that, you could send your foot out, out to the side, and we're going to focus on the right leg. So if that's your choice. I'm going to bend my left knee. So take a big inhale up to the sky. Reach up for invisible ropes hanging down. Rotate your chest towards your right leg and start to fold over top the right foot, the right leg, towards the knee, towards the shin wherever it is that you grab on. We need to focus on balancing the shoulders. So if you notice that your right shoulder is dipping and your left shoulder is lifted, then try to balance them, evening the shoulders out so that it appears as though you're straight over that right leg. Let's take two more breaths right here in this pose. Remember the lotus opens with every inhale, the lotus closes with every exhale. Now wherever your right hand is, keep it there. So if it's on your foot, grab onto your right foot with your right hand. If it's your ankle, grab onto your ankle, your shin, wherever you are. 
The left hand is going to sweep straight out. See how my arms kind of tee out to the side so that they're reaching apart from each other? So right hand is down my right leg, left hand is wide open now. And we'll take a big inhale, reaching up to the sky with that left hand, and maybe over your head so that you're reaching towards your right toes with your left hand. Getting a nice side body stretch through the left side and a right inner thigh stretch. Now let your head relax over to the right. Whenever you're ready, breathe in big and pull yourself back to center. Nice work everyone. So now what we're going to do is just take our right foot and make some space. So now, so if, if you're facing me and you're, you're looking like this, you're going to take your right foot and separate it. So now there's space, maybe about a block's width of space between your left foot and your right thigh. Place your hands down right in front of your left foot. For me, that's enough stretch. I already feel my right inner thigh stretching out there. But if you have more room in your body to move, you can start to walk your hands forward. Try to remain grounded, anchored, so that your right heel, your right sit bone, and your left sit bone stay rooted into the floor. And don't forget to breathe. Relax the shoulders, relax the jaw, we'll start to bring ourselves back up to center. We're going to be moving into Sukhasana with the right leg in front, so I just want you to bend that right leg, bend that right knee, and bring the right leg in front or stack it on top up to you how you like to sit like this and then again we're just taking our hands right here in front of our legs we're going to stretch our hips out just a little bit by walking our hands forward again it could just be one hand print it could be that you're very flexible here and you can really round over your legs my hope is that you're feeling a stretch in your right thigh somewhere so we don't want to feel this in the knee. If you do feel it in the knee, you might lean to the right towards that knee that you're feeling it in. All right, so from here, let's walk our hands back up towards our body. And we're going to work this right shoulder a bit more. So take your right arm and give yourself a half hug. <laughs> and then your left hand can come up to your right elbow and assist it. So my hand is right on the back edge of the elbow and I'm, I'm just pulling it across a little bit more. So I feel a stretch all the way through here, but also into the outside of the shoulder where it connects into my shoulder, into the shoulder blade area. If you want to, you can lean to the left a little bit and that kind of starts to open up through those right ribs too. Just an another another addition. We'll bring ourselves back up and we're going to swing that right arm up. Bend your elbow and bring your hand to your neck or the back of your head. So my hand is kind of wrapped around the back of my neck. And then my left hand is going to help it. So I'm going to reach up for that elbow and say I'm going to bring you straight up towards the ceiling. And again, you could lean even further to the left, and that'll add more stretch into that side body. So the goal is to feel the stretch somewhere between your elbow and your upper arm, somewhere in there. Tricep. Nice work. And we'll unwind there. Arms come out wide. Let's see here. Let's do right arm underneath. So you want left arm to cross on top. And then the right elbow karate chops and it holds the left elbow in place. So we're going into eagle arms next. 
So I've got my arms crossed in front, right elbow, karate chop, so that my left elbow is straight, right elbow is bent, left elbow then bend, so now my elbows are sitting into the elbow crease of each other. And if you want to, you can bring the backs of your hands together and maybe even twisting them around. I like to add movement there where I draw my elbows towards my belly, towards my chest, and then lift the elbows up and the fingers towards the ceiling. I'll just do that a couple times, noticing if there's any area in the shoulders that is feeling kind of tight. I'm feeling that on the top of my left shoulder blade. When you are done, unwind your arms. It's whenever you want to release the posture. It doesn't need to be now. Support yourself by bringing your hands behind you and squeezing those shoulder blades back. So that's where we'll meet in this heart opener. Hands supporting you behind your back. Throat open, chest open. Rolling forwards in the pelvis so that your lower back is arcing. And we'll bring ourselves up to center. We're going to do it all on the other side. So we're going to unwind our legs. Wiggle them out a little bit. All right, and so we're going to do this on the left side now. So now our left leg is going to go straight, and our right knee is bent with the knee turned out to the side. So I'll turn straight to you so you can see what that looks like forwards. All right, so, now remember, if your right knee doesn't like to bend, you could certainly straighten that leg out and just focus on the left leg. So let's take a big inhale up to the sky, reaching up, lengthening the whole body, and folding right over top the left leg, the straight leg, towards your foot, towards your ankle, towards your shin. Balance your shoulders out. Make sure they're even. And then look down at your knee and take three more deep breaths. After your third breath, we're going to move into that open heart position. So your left hand is going to grab onto your left foot or your left ankle, your left shin. The right hand reaches out so that your arms are spread apart, teed out. Right hand reaches up to the sky. And then we'll start to soften into our left side so that the right arm can reach over your head towards your left toes. Remember to open your heart. So you should feel a stretch through the right side body, the ribs, and the left inner thigh. Try to relax your head towards the left. And when you breathe in again, sweep your right hand all the way up, carrying you up to center. All right, I'm going to turn towards you, my friends. What we're going to do next is take our uh, left leg and just slide it out. So now you should have space between your left leg and your right foot, about a block's width. I already feel my inner thigh on this side, so I probably won't lean too much. But I'm going to focus on grounding my left heel my left hip bone and my right hip bone, and then I just start to lean forward. And I get this really big stretch in my inner thigh. And so you just want to go until you feel and feel, where your body just says, I cannot move anymore without moving into pain. And we don't want to cause pain in our body. Take a couple breaths and allow it to soothe that sore, tight muscle in the inner thigh. And 
whenever you're ready, bring yourself back up. All right, so we're going to crisscross our legs with the left leg in front. So you just want to bend your left knee, left leg's now in front, or it can stack on top. It's whatever you prefer, however you like to sit. And we'll sweep our hands right in front. It could just be here, or you could start to walk your hands forward. Some people are very flexible here. So you want to feel a stretch somewhere in your left hip. I feel it closer into the groin. Sometimes I feel it back near my sacrum in the lower back. So just find that end feel once again, where you feel a stretch, but it doesn't hurt. It could feel good. In some cases, if it's really tight, it could feel a little uncomfortable. And try to relax your jaw and your shoulders while you're here. Nice work. We'll start to walk our hands back up. It doesn't even need to be now, so if you're still loving that stretch, you could hang out longer. So now what we're going to do is reach our arms out wide, and we're going to cross our right arm on top. So your left arm should be underneath this time. Yep, and then the left elbow will bend, the right elbow will bend. So this is like step two, eagle arms. Step three is the backs of the wrists together. Step four is a full wrap around. And so some people will just get to this point and that's enough stretch. So listen to wherever your body is at, find the stretch and then start to explore a little bit. Or if you found that spot where it feels really tight, you might just hang out there and let it stretch out. Bring some breath into your shoulders. Remember, with every inhale, the lotus opens. And with every exhale, the lotus, even if it's just in your mind's eye, it closes. Now when you have, have had enough of this eagle arm, you can unwind. So that doesn't need to be now. It can be whenever your shoulders are feeling toasty. Bring your hands behind you, support yourself squeeze the shoulders back when you get there and that's where we'll meet. Let your head drop back a little bit in order to open the throat. And we'll bring ourselves back up to seated and we're gonna get our legs unwound here and so let's straighten out those legs and wiggle them out a little bit, shake them out And then we'll bring our feet flat and rock the knees from right to left. Just starting to warm up into the hips and low back a little bit. All right. So from here, let's practice our reverse tabletop. So I'm walking my hands in towards my body. Beginners, you want your fingertips pointed back. You could have your fingertips pointed out Advanced yogis can have their fingertips pointed forward, but you'll notice when you try that that you feel a wrist stretch. And we don't want to overdo the wrist because they're really important. So fingers pointed out or back is more, more cautionary. And then I'm going to bend my knees and I want to separate my feet to about knee width apart. So I don't want my knees to be knocking together. And then I'm going to start to push into my hands and push into my feet and it lifts my hips. Draw your knees forward over top your ankles and start to squeeze the tush a little bit to open up the chest. Nice. And we'll start to lower back down. Lengthen out your legs. Flip your toes back so you're lifting your toes up really high. Sweep your hands up overhead and fold forward over top your straightened legs, stretching hamstrings, stretching your back, stretching your arms out forward. Beautiful. Take two more breaths here, just folding forward. And we'll start to inhale and roll back up. 
All right, so from here, let's transition to tabletop position, which is hands and knees. So I really like to use a blanket underneath my knees. If you have a cushion hanging around or a blanket or anything like that, a pillow, you could use that. And um, we want to place our hands down on the floor with our fingers spread. So our fingers are spread out, our wrist is underneath the shoulder, and our wrist is also lined up with the knee behind it. As you inhale, you want to lift your tailbone and look forward. That becomes a cow position. See how my belly's kind of falling through? And then we want to round the back like a mad cat and look back at our thighs so that your neck is involved. As you inhale, open your chest, draw your shoulder blades back. As you exhale, look back and round the spine, tuck your tailbone. Let's try it one more time, inhaling to open the chest, exhaling to round the back. Alright, we're going to be moving into puppy pose, which is known as Anaharasana, or open heart pose. So we're going to feel this in our shoulder blades. You want to walk your hands forward. I have to walk my knees back a little bit. I'm going to drop onto my elbows, I start to look like a playful puppy, and I'm going to start to drop my forehead down to the ground, so that I'm looking back at my knees. You can feel that stretching through the armpits, through the shoulder blade area. And just breathe into that space. Take a couple breaths as you feel that opening happening through the shoulders. If you'd like to increase your stretch, you can rotate your palms towards the ceiling. So try to open your palms up to the ceiling there. That'll help. See if you can take one more big breath here. And we'll start to roll forward onto our elbows. That's a big stretch, huh? Walk up onto your hands. All right, so now we're going to take our right hand and reach it up towards the ceiling. Inhale, and as you exhale, thread the needle under the left, but don't drop down yet, because we're going to do that again. Inhaling, reaching the right arm up. Exhaling and threading the needle underneath the left arm. Let's try it one more time. This time, we're going to drop our right shoulder onto the floor. Right side of the face on the floor. Right arm is straight out underneath, so I'm, I'm pointing my finger straight towards the camera here. And then my left hand is going to slide up towards the top of my mat. That's one option. There's a lot of options. You could reach your hand up to the sky. You could bind your hand to your low back, which means bending your elbow and bringing the back of your hand to your sacrum or your opposite hip. But that's a pretty big move. So whatever option you like is the best one for you. We want to think about opening the right shoulder blade away from the spine and really rotating the whole back. And whenever it is that you've had enough, you can certainly come out of this pose. If you're still with me, let's take one more big breath here. Left hand can slide back whenever you're ready. Push into the floor and come back to tabletop with the hands more extended out. So it's more like these legs are about to break out from underneath that table. And then we'll do it on the other side, so the left arm can reach out and up, opening the chest, and exhaling, threading the needle underneath the right. But not dropping down, we're going to lift it up again, inhaling. Exhaling, threading the needle. One more like that. 
and then you can drop down onto your left shoulder. Your right hand can support you there. You want to be on the left side of your face. If you'd like, your right arm could extend up over your head to the top of your mat or extend up over your head towards the ceiling into the air. You could also try really opening the right side of your chest by binding your hand to your low back, opening that chest up. Focus on feeling the stretch in your right shoulder blade and take a breath or two. And when you have had enough, whenever that might be, you can bring your right hand down, do a little half push up, bringing yourself back to tabletop position. Let's do a cow and a cat. And we'll do two more rounds of that, just kind of working our shoulders out, working our hips out, everything that we just did. Awesome work. From here, tuck your toes. Start to pedal your toes out. So I'm not lifting my knees yet. I'm just kind of like stretching my toes out on my mat, tucking them down, leaning back into them a little bit, seeing what, I, what's cap what I'm capable of today. And then from there, when they feel nice and grippy, start to roll up into a downward facing dog, making some adjustments, pedaling your feet out a little bit, maybe walking it out, feeling your calves stretching feeling your arms and your hands really pushing into the mat, gaining strength. Feel your lower ribs knitting in towards your belly. And from here, let's start to walk our feet forward or walk your hands back or a combination of those so that you end up in a forward fold, just kind of hanging over your legs, softening your knees, and letting your arms and head just hang down. Just take a couple breaths here and let yourself kind of kind of hang out. And from here we'll begin our ascension upwards. You can sweep your arms out like a bird. Let the air catch those wings and float all the way up to standing. You can sweep your hands up overhead and we'll bring our hands to our heart center. And uh, I'm gonna get my blanket out of here so that I'm not tripping over it. And so from here we'll get started with a sun salutation. And so stand at the top of your mat. I'm going to make this the top of my mat for this sequence. You want your shoulders back and down. You want your core to be strong. So think about your lower ribs knitting in. Think about your tailbone tucking down so that you're not throwing your back or your hips backwards or too far forward, right in the middle. Hands right in front of the heart, feet grounded. Take an inhale here. Imagine a lotus opening. And as you exhale, imagine the lotus gently closing. It's an orange lotus. Breathing in, it opens up. And as you breathe out, the orange lotus closes and softens. Inhale and push your palms together. As you exhale, bring your hands down to the sides of your body. Inhale, sweep your arms out, up, overhead. And as you exhale, float down into that forward fold. Bend your knees like you're going to sit into a chair. Let your belly rest on your thighs. If you need to separate your feet, please feel free to do that. If you need a block under your hands, please feel free to do that if you have one accessible. Otherwise, just hover. You don't have to reach the ground 
to do this work the right way. So my knees are really bent here. And then I'm just going to practice trying to straighten one leg so that I can feel that leg start to stretch. So I'm doing my right leg. It's straight, but my left one is bent. And then we'll bend both knees and give those legs a little break, and then we'll try it on the left leg. So now my left leg is really stretching out. And then I'll relax and bend. Now let's work it with our breath. We'll do three of these. Inhale and lengthen your right leg, but your left knee stays bent. Exhale, bend both knees. Inhale, the left leg lengthens. Exhale, bend both knees. Inhale, right leg. Exhale, relax. Inhale, left leg. And exhale, relax when you're ready. One more on each side. With our next breath in, we're going to lift up to our shin or knee or ankle, and you want to push on that space so that your back flattens out. Your legs might go more straight, your shoulders lengthen out, shoulders drop from your ears. Take one more breath and kind of pull that belly button in, kind of like you're sucking it in. And let's exhale to bend our knees really deep. Hands touch the floor, so enough to get your hands to the floor, and we'll step one foot back and then the other for our downward facing dog. You can pedal out your heels here and get down into those calf muscles once again. Beautiful, with strong shoulders, look from your toes to your hands and roll forward like you're going to do a push up. So if you need to adjust your hands or your feet, you should. And then we'll drop to our knees, unhook our toes, and lower ourselves down to the floor. Great job. So from here, we're going to do a chest opening position. Some of you have done this, some of you have not. I want you to extend your right arm straight out to the side. So your right arm is going to reach out to the side with you on your belly. And my left hand is still bent, so I'll show you what that looks like from the front. It's like this. <laughs> I'll do it from the front so those of you watching can see. So my right arm is extended out. Left arm is still in this little push-up type pose. And then we're going to start to roll over our right shoulder. So see how my left hand is pushing into the floor and I'm rolling over my straight right arm. So I'm not going to roll very far. And you could start to get your whole body involved by taking your right leg and bending your knee and lifting your leg over your straight left leg. Or, I'm sorry, I have the, the legs wrong. Left leg over your straight right leg. Yeah, so it's opening the chest a lot, a lot, a lot. So if you're like, ow, it kind of hurts, then you've gone too far. You don't want it to hurt. Let's try it on the other side. So we're just going to roll flat onto our belly and extend our left arm straight out to the side. And then our right hand is going to come up kind of like it's doing a push up. And you can push into the ground with your right arm and start to kind of flop over your straight left arm. Opening that chest up. You can kind of feel it down in your bicep on the left side. You can get your whole body involved by starting to roll, almost twisting into the position. Whenever you're ready, it doesn't need to be now. So if you're loving that pose, you could stay longer. But if you're ready to release, we're just going to flatten out back onto our belly. The left hand will slide back into um, our chest so that we're going to do a push-up. <laughs> but we're not. We're just going to peel our chest up off the ground. So there's a little sphinx. You could go into a little cobra if your back's feeling okay this morning. And we'll lower back down into the floor. 
Start to press up to hands and knees. If you need to make adjustments into tabletop, you can. Tuck your toes and we'll roll up for our last downward facing dog. Pedaling this out, walking through the feet, pushing through the hands. And whenever you want to, relax back down to our tabletop position. I'll face the camera here so you can see what I'm doing. So here's tabletop. I'm going to start to come back into like a half child's pose. So it's not all the way down, but it's like I'm, I'm coming back for a child's pose. But then I'm going to walk my hands out to the right off of the yoga mat. And I'm going to start to lean this left armpit and rib cage down to the ground towards the yoga mat. It doesn't meet. I'm just creating tension there so that it's stretching in my left armpit. Inhale and roll yourself back up so that you're kind of cattywampus off to the right and we'll start to walk our hands back on to center, off to the left. We'll start to lean back for that child's pose and then lean into your right elbow and your right underarm, trying to relax, trying to ground. One more breath here. We'll pick ourselves back up to center, walk our hands back onto the mat. We're going to walk our knees to one side of the mat. So mine walked over to the left and then I drop my right hip down and swing the legs around. We're going to start to lay ourselves back onto the mat. So if you need a sip of water or anything like that before we lay down, feel free to do that. I have my hands wrapped around my knees. And I'm just hovering on that spot on my tailbone where I can balance. So we're going to do a little boat pose, get our core engaged before we lay down. So some of you can just stay like this. See how my feet are lifted though, they're not touching the floor. So I'm just kind of balancing, hanging out. I don't want my back to be too rounded. In fact, I should probably bring it up a little bit. And if you feel safe there, like you're not going to roll out, you could try to let go of your knees and try to just hover for as long as you can, really. But if things get really tight or you're feeling your hip flexors really catch on fire, then feel free to grab back on. We're going to next go into a Baddha Konasana. So from here, roll forward, let your feet come together and your knees come apart. Rolling forward. Stretching out those inner thighs, groin a little bit more before we start relaxing completely. Nice work. Now we're going to lay out through Navasana, through boat pose. So I'm going to pull the knees back together like a book, balance on my tailbone, and as slowly as I can, I'm going to reach my hands up, lengthen my legs out, and lay out onto my mat. Let your arms come out to the sides of your body. Let your legs just be heavy so that the pinky edges of your feet feel like they're just flopping to the ground. Let your shoulder blades relax back into your yoga mat. Feel the center of your weight, gravity, the sits bones, the tailbone, the hips resting heavy on the floor. Shoulder blades and the back of the head just resting on the yoga mat. And if you'd like to, 
your right hand can come back onto your belly while your left hand just remains out to the side, knuckles on the floor, palm facing up, bringing your awareness back to your breath, back to the lower belly. Every inhale, imagine the petals of an orange lotus opening. Every exhale, imagine the petals of that orange lotus closing. Remembering your breath, remembering the lotus that opens with each inhale and softens with each exhale. The orange lotus that sits right beneath our belly button, the navel or sh sacral chakra, it really has to do with taking care and nourishing the body. It has to do with studying yourself, known as Svadhyaya. And the second chakra is known as Svadhisana. So these have to do with each other. Svadhyaya, Svadhisana, they are about nourishing the body nourishing yourself, taking care of yourself. And when that chakra is out of balance, out of whack, you, can, you might even have digestive issues because the body is unable to digest. It's unable to take in what is happening, what, what we're putting into it, even if it's something that is normally good for us. It could just be that something's out of whack energetically. And so by just imagining this orange lotus opening with each inhale and softening with each exhale, you can start to bring energy to that space. Now let's bring energy to the rest of our body by wiggling our toes in and out, rotating the knees up and back out. bringing our arms down to the sides of our body 
and up overhead like you're stretching in the morning. Point your toes down, reach your hands up and stretch, 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 arcing your back a little bit. And relax. We'll start to walk our feet towards our body so that our knees are bent and our feet are flat. If you need to, you can lift your back a little bit and, and uh, drop your hips back down. And we'll give ourselves a big hug here, wrapping the arms around the tops of the shins or the knees and starting to just massage your low back into the floor. Stay as long as you need here on your back, of course. If you'd like to, you can start to roll onto a side, supporting your head with that upper arm of the, the side you're lying on. So I'm right, lying on my uh, left side and my left arm is wrapped around my left ear. Just taking a moment to lay on the side, allowing the body to recognize all the work that we've done this morning, today, whenever you happen to be doing this video. And then we'll press into the floor and roll ourselves back up to seated and find your way back to your favorite seat. It might be your your Sukhasana with crossed legs, it might be legs straight out. Maybe you need to remain on your side or in Shavasana for a bit longer. As you come back up to seated, just take a couple breaths, remembering that lower belly energy. My hope is that each of you feels better you feel a little bit more, more relaxed, a little bit more stretched out, especially in the shoulders. Maybe, maybe a little bit uh, calmer. And I thank each of you so, so much for joining me today. In yoga, we say namaste, which means I bow to the beam inside of you, the beam of energy, the beam of life and love and truth. The same beam resides in me and the entire universe. And so when we recognize that beam inside of each of us, we recognize that we are one. Namaste, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a great rest of your day. In shukriya, that means thank you.